transformer is the most critical asset of the grid. Without transformer, there is basically no grid. The generation device that we have has to be designed with low voltage for safety and just for limit, the limited capability. You ultimately need a transformer to elevate that voltage and transfer the power through long distance. And you need transformer again to reduce it at a safe level where we can use it normally in our houses. Transformers are everywhere and that's why we categorize them. Uh, the transformer that we really focus on, part of this technology development, are what we call power transformer. And nobody knows really the actual number in the US, but you can count them in thousands. Uh, and they come in different size and characteristic. Uh, the idea is, since their design, their original design, they were introduced 100 years ago, they has not been changed since then. And for the very first time, we will have uh, an opportunity for technology, a new technology of transformer that will allow them to have a flexibility that is more contemporary to the, our new grid. Today, if the original designer come, he will point a transformer and see, yeah, that's exactly what I have designed. And because it's a very reliable asset, Nobody really thought about changing anything because it was performing as expected and it has the utmost reliability that the grid needed. And because of the amount of power that they allow to transfer are very expensive. Today they are tailored for, for the reason of cost and reliability. They are specifically designed for the application that they are targeting. Which means if a transformer fails, for instance, today, the utility, the customer needed to have the exact same transformer in order to replace it, which ultimately drive a lot of inventory because of how critical they are. Utility cannot afford losing a transformer for an extended period of time. So their main limitation today is the flexibility. Unless they are identical to another one, they cannot really replace it. The flexible transformer is a new design that allowed them to do so. Transformers are specified typically with three main parameters. One is the power, the other one is the voltage, the other one is the impedance. Today's transformer, they have fixed power, voltage, and impedance. The flexible transformer that we have, have three rating of voltage and a variety value of impedance. So technically, one flexible transformer can replace any other transformer in the grid or for the fleet that it is designed for. So the flexibility is really having a transformer that have multiple voltage rating and multiple impedances so they can accommodate the grid variation and evolve with the grid. Can you imagine a tire for a car that can go for any vehicle, regardless of the size? That's what the flexible transformer is doing for transformer. And instead of having multiple units ready for replacement, they can have one single unit which help them to reduce their cost of operation and which increase the reliability and then the resiliency of the grid. The other aspect is it's a flexibility in operation. I just mentioned about the impedance because the next grid will be a very dynamic grid because of fluctuation in generation and fluctuation in load. The grid operator will need to have flexible assets that can operate at the maximum performance with that dynamically changing grid the flexible transformer allowed to do so because its impedance can be adjusted while it is online without the energization. Transformer of today cannot do that. Today, if a transformer fail, utility take anywhere from 18 months to 36 months to have a replacement unit. With the flexible transformer, instead of having replacement that takes month, it will take weeks. Instead of having thousand spares unit, you can be operating with the same level of reliability and resiliency with a couple of units. The grid is hit by lightning very regularly at different points of the grid. When you have this flexible transformer, I can imagine a scenario where such event will be happening and the operator will put the impedance of the transformer at the highest level to minimize the fault condition. And if the event pass, then put it back to the uh, preset impedance. In that sense, I see it really beneficial in the operation of the grid. The transformer that we have designed has the same service life of conventional transformer, use the same material and comply to the same standard. So in that sense, the industry acceptance was 
as expected. Uh, it is actually deployed in the field and is operating through the same stress that conventional transformer is seeing. And from what we heard from now from our partner Cooperative Energy, it is still operating as expected. In a couple of years from now, I expect to see some penetration of the flexible transformers, starting with the large network.